you. All right, hello everybody. Um, my name is Jamie. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do the demo on today is doing a finish something like this for a um, like an abandoned, not rusty as such because they don't rust, but sort of an abandoned and, and very um, highly weathered aircraft. So this one is a test piece I did uh, when I was just experimenting with the technique of doing a Japanese aircraft and I just happen to have this one lying around all built up it's an old model um, <clears throat> just to see if I could recreate some of the effects that I'd seen in some in some photographs so the kind of scenario I gave myself was that this aircraft had been abandoned in the jungle in 1945 at the end of the war and some explorers had just found it in the sort of 1970s so it's had about 30 years of um, life just sitting there in the jungle um, and experimenting with all sorts of chipping effects and AK interactive products just to see how it would turn out and um, I think it turned out okay personally. So that's the effect we're going to um, try to achieve today is something you know along the lines of that so I'll leave that out the front you can have a have a look at that. So the products I'm going to use first of all the test piece just a measurement 109 uh, it's just 48 scales the academy kit just knocked it up in a, in a couple of hours, just with super glue, just for speed, really. And the finish you see there, it's had um, an Alclad um, black primer, then some Alclad um, just aluminium, okay? But the important thing is, is it's had a matte varnish, okay? If you're gonna use the hairspray, um, hairspray itself, all the, all the chipping fluid type products, I found with this technique, if you don't have a matte surface, it's too shiny. So when you do your, the actual trying to get the effect with the water and such, you can just wipe it off and it just peels the paint off. So the matte varnish I find is an important step. Can you use acrylic varnish? Uh, yeah, I use acrylic paints and varnishes exclusively. So the one I'll be using today is just the Tamiya oh, yeah. flat clear, okay? But the other one I use is the Vallejo yeah. Vallejo one as well, like all right, just thin with water. Oh, do you? Oh, right, yeah. So that, that should work fine. Okay. <clears throat> so um, what I'll do is I'll do one half with the hairspray, okay, and the other half I'll use the AK Interactive Warn Effects. Now, the difference between the two is um, all the hairsprays, and you may have seen Mick Jimenez if you've seen any of his stuff, all right, um, videos and blogs and things is hairsprays come in all different shapes, sizes, cans, formulas, um, ultimate hold and all the stuff that ladies like to use. The one I use is I knit this from my daughter, all right, so don't tell her. Um, this is just a Tresemme one and I find that this has worked fine. Um, normally the cheaper the better, the stronger, more posh, expensive hairsprays is they've got other stuff in it with extra hold and stuff and it, it tends to be a bit sticky, all right. The Warn Effects, uh, developed by um, MIG, is effectively hairspray. It's slightly thicker, but there's no perfume in it, all right? But it, it does the same sort of job. But it's been developed that it's a lot more stable. I have found in the past that using hairspray, it can affect, if you're doing a layered um, camouflage, it can affect um, the first layer of camouflage. So I did a T55 tank, an Iraqi one, which is in the competition actually. I put the, um, the sand paint on, uh, sealed it in with varnish, and I sprayed hairspray on the top. And the hairspray actually affected the paint and made it look quite patchy and, and all the rest of it, which was okay in the end, because I sort of covered it up with all the weathering effects, but it's not ideal. You don't get any of that using the AK Interactive stuff. All right. So what I'll do is give this stuff a bit of a bit of a shake. All right. Now, the key to this is, is the more product you use, the bigger and more effective the chipping is going to be. All right. For this sort of uh, model, we don't want the big heavy chips. We want lots of small little chips for the initial effect. So, excuse me. It's literally a. And that's it. That's all you're going to need. All right. Just a couple of blasts. Now, if Andy, my friend at the back there, remembered that I had a hairdryer which needed a European adapter on it, <laughs> then what I'd do is I'd blast that with a hairdryer and it, 
Have you got one now? See, I'm smarter than you. Oh, I thought you'd <laughs> forgotten it. All right, mate. So when he's come back with my adapter that he originally forgot, okay, we'll, um, <clears throat> we'll blast it with a hairdryer. But actually now, just leaving that, it's, it's almost dry now. All right, so it dries very quickly. Right, belt and braces, because I haven't rehearsed this, I'm just going to give it one more blast on the fuselage because I may have missed a bit. That's it. So while we're waiting for Andy, is I'll spray the other side using the AK Interactive effects. So because I'm a bit cheap and a bit pinky, I'll just use this little, this little pot here, which, um, does anyone use an Aztec airbrush? Has anyone ever used it? How'd you get on with it? Do you like it? Yeah, it's a bit like Marmite. You like it, I hate it. I used it for six months and then threw it away because I thought it was useless. Um, but the pots fit the Iwata stuff, which is good news. The stuff, he, as it comes, I find a bit too gloopy. So if you sprayed it straight from the jar, it'll collect in lots of little spots. Okay, so when you put your top coat on and then try and chip, it'll only chip where the fluid has been because it will collect in the, in the spots. So I tend to thin it down with just a bit of, bit of water. You get out your tap. And I'll thin it initially about 50-50 and we'll see how we get on. Can't see in the light, there you go, it's about 50-50. So it actually, this bottle I bought when it first came out and I've done countless models with it and it's still Still got a quarter left, all right? What's so it called? It's uh, Warn Effects. That's it? That's it, it's just called Warn Effects. There's another one which is, I think, heavy chipping, yeah, which, okay. is the, which is the stronger stuff, and you'll get bigger, more heavier chipping. heavier chipping. So it does what it says on the tin, <laughs> as the tele advert says. So I'll just give that a bit of a, a bit of a mix. Eve! <laughs> Clunk. Brilliant. The airbrush I use is the Awata TR1. Okay, it's got a trigger grip. So, because I do a lot of German stuff, a lot of modelling, mm -hmm. that's brilliant. You can do it all day with that action. I just think it's a superb piece of kit. So what I do once I've given a mix, I always put my finger on the end and squeeze the trigger, and I'll do that. You see the bubbles coming out the top. That just gives it another final mix. And all we do is you just spray it on. So if you look at that, you can see it's in little dots really. So it's yeah. still a little bit too thick, I'd say. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've broken your light. Yeah. <laughs> There we go, all right. I think you can see that. So what I'll do is I'll just, while well, my friend tries to fix the light that I've just broken. Sorry, mate. And you're one, eh? There we go. Okay. I'll promise not to touch it again. So I've just put a little bit more water in that, just to thin it down a bit more. That's a bit better. So that'll do. You forgot my cleaning pot as well, by the way. <laughs> Hi, Pat. You're so just hair dry it. That's not going to last, is it? Let me just dry it off. Just running under the under the fuselage there, yeah, that's no drama, you just wipe it with your finger. There we go, that's it. <laughs> I get another one. That's all right. It's just the uh, connection I think. Ow! See you getting electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs>
How do you think it's going so far? Rubbish! Does it bother to you with the black one? No, I'm happy with black, mate. Prefer a bit of black. There we go. Sure. Right, you, you have control of the lights, mate. <laughs> Take it out of my fee. Right, there we go. So that's 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 dry now. Okay, touch dry. Um, what I'll do though is just on the outer half of the wing, I'll just give it a second coat, and then we can see how the the um, the heavier coat, if you like, oops, affects it. So that's quite wet on there. Probably can't see that because it's dark, but. Remember what I did with the cleaning station? Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And everything that you get right is yours. Correct, I'll take all the credit, mate. We're a double act. We are. So there you go, so that's dry. So a quick blast with the hairdryer and we're done. So if Andy had remembered my cleaning station, I clean the airbrush out, but do a bit of that and we'll be fine. Can't remember. I thought it was in the box, but There we go. Right, so that's all prepared now. So what I shall do is we'll just clean my pot out. So once this once the stuff is on, the hairspray and the chipping fluid, you won't be able to tell really. There's no difference in, in that to what it was before. Okay. Do you have to use both agents? Uh the hairspray and the special stuff? No, I tend to use that now exclusively it's just I thought I'd just do both so we can compare and contrast so let's paint the top coat I've just got a random Tamiya uh, green this happens to be dark green XF61 um, this effect works better with matte paint okay and that will become important a little bit later on in fact no scratch that we'll actually use grey first so what the effect I'm going to try and achieve now is just like a weathered natural metal all right, so using the gray will just dull the shine because aluminium actually will corrode if exposed to the air. All right, um, it tends to go matte and you can get like a white or a light gray um, coating, almost like rust, I suppose, but it is like a, like a very light gray. So this is just, to me, a sky gray, matte again, and I'll explain why matte in a moment. Give that a bit of a swirl. Uh, I thin it with alcohol. This is just isopropyl alcohol. Probably a bit too much. Perfect. Um, you probably can, but to be honest, I've not tried it. Because I used it and the paint collides. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So I've just thinned thin the Tamiya paint by about 50-50 and all we'll do is just put a very light mist coat on. Okay, something like that. So all you want to do really is just, okay, so it's a very light misty coat. You see that's dry, touch dry already. So you don't have to be too careful. As soon as I say, don't try to be too careful, I'll make a right mess. But with the application on the model, Literally, it's just a very light mist coat.
and that's it done. Alright, I'll clean that up in a minute. So, quick blast with a hairdryer, belt and braces. There we go. So it's just a very light mist coat. You can see it's still quite a patchy finish. That's absolutely fine. All right, because it's just the undercoat. Now for the fun bit. Well, I'll say that, I'm gonna clean the airbrush now. It's not so fun. Airbrush is clean. Right, again, just taking your water. We will take a, just a wide soft brush. And what we'll do is we'll just dampen the surface. So I'll do the wing that we did the, uh, if I do this one first, the hairspray. And we'll just, allow the water to soak through the paint onto the hairspray below. The advantage with the matte paint is, is the matte paint will absorb the, the water and it will soak through. If you do it on a glossy surface, the water tends to pool in little blobs and it won't actually soak through into the hairspray, okay, all over. Then, what we try and do is, this brush is just an old cut down brush um, which I've cut down so it's a little bit more stiff as we just work in the paint and what will happen is the water will soak through the top coat and dissolve the hairspray. When it dissolves the hairspray what it'll do is it'll lift off the dry painted top coat and you get this really nice random chipping effect effect. Just a couple of points to note is the heavier your hairspray or the AK fluid the bigger the chipping okay and the more effective it'll be. The longer you leave the hairspray to dry the harder it will be for it to the water to act and dissolve so the smaller the chipping until eventually obviously it'll dry completely and then won't work. That's starting to have an effect. I tend to keep the surface wet. And you just keep scrubbing away. If you find it's been a bit stubborn, you can take a bit of your alcohol, just a little bit. Okay. And what that'll do is that will dissolve the top coat a lot more effectively, like that. So I'll just do this on the outer wingtip so you can see. Okay. So I'm actually happy with that. So I'll keep going. <clears throat> so I just dab it. Give it a blast with a hair dryer. Just clean off that bit. There, 
if I pass that round, so you can see there, what's actually happened is, is the chipping's um, uh, done its stuff, okay? The hairspray's done its stuff. Towards the, the wing tip, where I use the alcohol just to speed up the process, it's a lot more effective, okay? But the alcohol has stained the paint, as it were, so you've just got to bear that in mind. But this is just the base layer, so it doesn't matter too much. Towards the, uh, the inner half of the wing is um, with no alcohol, and you can see the effects of the chippings there are a lot finer. such a technique using hairspray yeah well it's the um it's the armor guys that sort of first started using it and i've only got into armor the last couple of years and what i like to do now is try and take some of the armor techniques into the aircraft and this is one way i thought well this would work quite well another area for certainly for the aircraft models where it works is your winter whitewash your temporary winter whitewashes from the eastern front so um, again, in the competition, I've got a Meshmit 110, the Edward one in 70 second scale winter whitewash. And I use the, um, this technique with this stuff on it and it works very well for that. This is the same technique you used for the Anko 111? Correct, right. yeah, that I did for Sound Magazine. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the, the chipping fluid and compare and contrast. How long after application can you work again? Um, they say about 24 hours, actually. Um, What's the most you've ever worked with? About 10 minutes. Because <laughs> I'm impatient. So we'll just soak that. Right, and that's actually starting to work already. What you may find is you, is you may see the, the surface start to bubble up. That's a good thing. That means it's actually working. All right, and that's actually working quite nice already. Yeah, less Yeah, see. But on the outer side, remember it was effectively two moderately heavy coats. That hind call that I did was um, that was just hairspray, so that I think that was before this stuff had come out actually, um, and I don't know how much of that you'd use on a 30 second scale hind call, but quite a quite a bit I'd imagine. So we'll just keep going with that. So on the outer wing. That's a really nice effect. I'll keep the inner wing. Uh, I'll keep the inner wing wet because I want it to work. Uh, I did a. 48 scale P61, so that's got a wingspan of about that. Um, with a model that size, I tend to compartmentalize it. So I did one wing, then the fuselage, then the other wing. And I help that just find, because that keeps the drying time consistent, mm -hmm. keeps the size of the chips consistent then. Always making 34 scale. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I've done a, I've done a winter 109 in 30 second. Um, using using this stuff, and it was brilliant, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think this stuff is better um, because, like I say, it's a lot more consistent. So it doesn't matter what humidity you've got, um, what temperature your workspace is. This this tends to work the same every time, whereas I find the hairspray can be a bit 
temperamental. It's more, more even. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we'll just keep going on this side. Now, if you're doing an abandoned aeroplane, such as this, you've got to try and think as well as the environment it's in and how it's actually going to weather. So when it's exposed to the elements, obviously the upper surfaces are going to be more affected than the under surfaces. So that can provide quite a nice contrast as well. Right, that's actually a little bit slow for the demo. In fact, here we go, it's starting to work now. I was going to add a bit of alcohol, but I'm not going to. So we'll see how we're diddling on with that. Quick blast with the hairdryer. So I'll pass that round and you can see the difference. It's very, very subtle with just the one coat of the worn effects, but it's kind of what we're after. And if you just turn it, you can see the light catching the, the silver bits. Brilliant. So what I'll do just on the fuselage, let's have a go at using a bit of the, the booze. So if you're going to use the uh, the alcohol, I just sort of temper it and just say just just be very careful, okay? Because it can strip your top coat if you're not careful. So we'll see how we get on with that. You notice when using the alcohol, I tend to use a bit more of a tapping motion because again, you might find that you wipe it off if you use a scrubbing motion. Did you use the same effect on the roundels of the gecko here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll come to that at the end. Markings and just sort of the considerations really when using the masks. I think that will do us. I'll just use a little bit more and then we're almost done. Just use a bit of water now, just to clean that off a bit. Perfect. Right, and again, notice I'm dabbing it, because if you wipe it, just beware. Dry it. Okay, I'll just tidy it up a bit. Because 
So I could say the alcohol has affected the grey slightly. But what we're after is a really worn, patchy type of finish. Which I think we've achieved. So if you do it the light, especially near the cockpit, using the alcohol has really worked quite nicely. And also what I say is the thinner the coat of paint you use, again, the more effective the, the technique's gonna be. If you put quite a dense coat of paint on, obviously it's gonna take time for the water to, to work through and work, and it's harder to lift it off. Do you always use um, gray paint at the start? I always use gray on top of the silver, yeah, just to kill that shine from the silver. But we'll move more now while well, that's going round to the rusty type of shade. So it's based on XF9, which is whole red, which is like a red brown colour. But this I want a really quite a thin mix. So that's going to be too dark as it is. So I'm just going to lighten it with a bit of yellow. And that will give a kind of an orangey tone to it make it a little bit more rusty. You see very tiny amounts of paint to quite a lot of thinner. So it's almost like a dirty, quite a dense wash. I'm going to use a grey just to knock back there because that's quite a vivid colour. This will just dull it down slightly. Like that. Keep those open just in case it is a little bit too thin. Perfect. Right. I'll just spray it on the underside so you can see the. Right, that's the sort of colour I'm after, okay? So it's like an orangey, rusty, browny, grey kind of tone. Okay, that's what I'm after. However, before we do that, which uh, press pressure do you use? Uh, that is on. About 25 psi, so it's just over two bar. Yeah. Okay, so a sort of a moderate type pressure. Now I've forgotten, damn it, I forgot my little silver pot. So I have to use this one. So I'll save that for in a minute. Right, we need to protect that finish now. So we'll put in a blast of matte varnish. I'll just clean this out. So, matte varnish between every single step. All right, and that will just protect what you've done already. Don't need too much of this. Brilliant. And I just blast it on, just like that. I 
hopefully that'll be right there. That's touch dry already. That's the advantage of the Tamiya paints, just dry so quick. So that's it, all sealed in, okay? Now, next coat of hairspray, all the chipping fluid. So again, I'll use hairspray on this side. And this time I want it a bit heavier. Okay, that's that done. and we'll use the worn effects again on the other side. Same as before. Okay, but again, you can see this is this is quite a bit more now. All right, that's a lot heavier that coat. Just get rid of the excess. Again, if you get a bit of a run, just wipe it with your finger, that'll spread it out. Quick blast with that and it's dry. So there we go, ready to rock and roll. So taking the colour that I mixed a bit earlier, which I've just spilt all over, Eve's very nice clean cutting mat, I shall mix some more. Sorry about that Eve. So, a bit of alcohol and we'll use the XF9 again. And the yellow. Need a bit more. Okay, and then we'll just finish off with a bit of the grey just to not the, because it's a bit bright. Not the brightness back a bit. Perfect. So that's that yellowy, orangey, browny, grey type dull shade. Right, this time I'm going to apply it slightly differently, is I'm going to concentrate in nooks and crannies and along panel lines. Okay. But I'm going to be quite random. Doesn't have to be too neat at all. Okay, that's the sort of thing I'm doing. All right. Yeah, just on the panel lines and in the shadow areas and stuff. Okay. Thank you. 
And what I'll do is just a very light coat over the top just to blend it all in, but not too much. Okay. So that's the kind of effect. There you go. You can... Which needle do you need? Do, do you use the finest? It's a, I think it's a 0.3 off the top of my head. I think. What is it? TR1 needle. 0.3. I forgot the cleaning station. What do you need? Some spray away or something? No, I've got some of that. No, just the actual docking cleaning station thingy. Say again? Yep. No, it's the constant setting. It's just with this airbrush, um, with the double action, it's once you've got the air, then when you go to paint, that's your flow there. You can feel it catch. You can feel it catch. In fact, it's a double action, yeah. 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 It's better, I think. It's much nicer. yeah, it's brilliant. It's lovely. More control, I believe. Yeah, much more control. It's brilliant. I swear by it. Well, once he once he started copying me. I wish I'd have thought I'd come sooner and heckle you. You could have done, yeah. I would have called you a knob cheese even earlier. <laughs> so who did you get to do the models for you? <laughs> I'm going to move from knob cheese onto Bellend. <laughs> right. <coughs> exactly the same. Slather on. Now, obviously, this is a oh, that's for the news, not the weather. This is a lot thinner, so it's going to start acting a lot quicker um, in the middle of the panels, which is fine. All right, will you carry on with that, mate? I'll, uh... Yeah, I think I'll be fine, actually, mate. That, that's great. <laughs> Jay? How far do you think you would have got before I called you back? Pardon? How far do you think you would have got before I called you back? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Right, and then we just do exactly the same. Tap water, plain water. Uh, it is, yeah, just tap water. Which at the minute we have an awful lot of in the UK. I know. See, so half of it's underwater. just the effect I was after. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll just keep doing this quickly and then I'll, once I'm done, I'll hand it round. But the effect is exactly the same as what we had before. But like I say, it's gonna be a little bit more effective because the paint is actually a bit thinner. Now with all these different layers, you can keep going back over and over again until you're happy with the effect. Um, also I'm just doing the one coat here. Right, I'll just dry that off with a hair dryer and then pass it around.
So again, what we'll do is we'll seal that in using matte varnish. Okay, so all sealed in, back to the hairspray again. And then more worn effects. Just use up the last little bit because we've got it in there. There we go. So we'll just flush that through with a bit of booze. Right, now for the camouflage. So I'm just gonna use just a just a, a plain green for this one. So just like what I did there. Okay, this happens to be dark green, XF61. It's quite an old pot, as you can see. And I'm not very scientific, I'll just bung it in till it looks about right. Like that, that'll do. Perfect, right. So we'll start on with the hairspray side. I tend not to pre-shade. Some people pre-shade their panel lines in black before they start, I tend not to. So just a very light coat to start off with. Like that, just quite a patchy light coat to begin with. Oops, don't want to break the other light. Okay. Why, the panel lines in black, why don't you prefer it? 
because I find it's not very really controllable. Um, to my eyes, it doesn't look particularly very realistic um, because that's not how aeroplanes weather in the real world. And also when you try to do this technique, you don't want that layer of black underneath because that'll come through. Okay, so that's the base coat done, very quick. Just a misty, quite a patchy, light green coat. What you can do as well is, and what I've done on there, is just pick out certain panels and do them a little bit more denser. And that'll help create a bit more of a more random effect. Okay, so it's almost like noise in a picture. So we'll just pick out one particular panel. Okay, just like that, just one panel picked out and we'll just see the difference when we come to do our thing. What I tend to do now is, and I do this for all my camouflage schemes, is we'll lighten the base coat now. So we'll use a bit, because uh, we've got green in there, I'll use yellow to lighten it. If you use yellow, it tends to keep the shade a bit warm. If you use white, um, it can get washed out and look quite chalky, I find. So yellow is a good one for, gr uh, for green. All right, just move that out so you can see. A bit more, I think. <clears throat> I'll give that a bit of a mix, blow it through. Right, now a lot of people will, will fade the centre of panels, okay? Aeroplanes don't weather like that, alright? What they tend to do is they tend to weather evenly over the surface and the light will actually catch along the panel lines because the panel lines don't butt up against each other perfectly. They tend to be just ever so slightly raised. Okay, and the light will catch the leading edge. So what I tend to do is I tend to do the reverse and I will highlight the panel lines. Okay, and that gives a quite a nice effect, I think. And I'll also do a random mottle over the top. Water escaping. Okay, actually, I don't think I've got enough contrast there, so I'll pour some more white, uh, yellow in. Just a bit, not too much. That's a bit better. And this is the advantage of this airbrush. You've got so much control. You can be very accurate with your spray.
Okay, there we go. So we've got a nice faded effect. What I've done is I've concentrated that lighter mix on the top of the spine, because obviously that's going to fade a little bit more. And I've also, if you look carefully, just down by um, this area here, where there's some nice big rivets, I've actually um, highlighted those with, the, uh, with this mix as well. So I shall pass that one around. With the green, because again, you can get slightly different, just that chalky tone you can actually use to, to help you out, but always in conjunction with the yellow, never just on its own. When I paint the uh, vehicle green, brown also, mm -hmm. brown and yellow. Brown and yellow works as well, yep. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also just a question of experimenting on an old model and see what works for you as well. Uh, white and grey are quite good for blue. White and grey for blue, yeah. Grey is quite quite good because it, it will it will make it a little bit more dull as well yeah. as opposed to chalky. And when you paint a red surface you have to use yellow underneath Yeah, yeah, because if you use white it will go it will go pink. But actually with, with this model here I did use a little bit of white for that pinky tone because yeah. that's the effect I was after. Yeah. Okay. okay. So there we go. We are uh, just about touch dry now. So here we go again. What you can use, just on the fuselage there, you see the surface tension of the water, it's just making it separate. If you just put a little bit of liquid soap or washing up liquid, um, that just helps to break the surface tension. But what you do find as well is when you start scrubbing, you get a load of bubbles, all right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. just a tiny, tiny amount. <laughs> so because that's a little bit more paint on there, oh, there we go, that's working quite nice already on top of the fuselage. So that's working straight away. Now you'll be able to see this a lot more now because the contrast between the, the darker green and the undercoat is a lot higher. So it'll be a lot easier to see the effect. I'm moving a more of a tapping motion as well because I was finding using the the rubbing method it was because uh, the bristles are quite hard they're actually scratching the surface that's working quite nicely now So I'm quite happy with that at the minute, so I'll just dab that off. Give it a blast. So you can see that wing. Really nice chipped effect. So I'll keep going. Uh, yeah. So that's the hairspray wing. Let's try the AK Interactive side. So 
So this has actually been a little bit more effective. So I've just got to be careful not to not to overdo it. So you want to be quite random. Uh, some panels you might want to do a lot more weathered, which is what I'm going to do here. Some panels you'll want to leave to be just slightly chipped, just to give that contrast, just to make it so it's not too even. So it's a lot more interesting on the eye. So I'm quite pleased with that. that round so that on the other wing I did um, with the AK interactive is I've done heavily chipped areas some less chipped areas um, and also I've altered the concentration of the paint as well which is also going to have a variance of effect okay. so you see it's very quick uh, what I'll do is I'll just finish off the fuselage and then we'll move on. Right, after this stage what I'd do is I'd, again, I'd seal it with varnish and then I'd leave it for 24 hours, okay? Because the stage after that is uh, the markings. Now, I tend to spray all of my markings, um, especially when you're doing schemes like this. It's, it's very straightforward. But what you can find is the, um, the vinyl masks that you use will pull up your paint. Okay, especially because you've got all those layers of hairspray, all the AK Interactive fluid. So if you leave it at least 24 hours, it just helps to prevent that. What I also do is I reduce the tack of the vinyl itself, so you make it less sticky. All right, that always helps. And where I can, I'll put paper down rather than just using masking tape and all of the vinyl. Again, just to protect it. So that is finished. Yeah, Montex masks, and I also use a guy called uh, Ian from Ad Astra masks, and he's in Canada, and he does custom stuff. So if you send him a, a, a picture, or scan him a decal sheet as well, so he's got all the sizes. Yeah, he's he LSP as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. he is, he's very good. Um, so you can do all custom masks, which is just brilliant. And I very rarely use decals now, yeah. to be honest. All right, so there we go. So that's the few. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Right, we'll just seal that in with a bit of varnish. There's my booze. Right, you might be thinking, oh, all these layers of paint, it's all gonna fill in all my surface detail. Because they're very, very thin layers, it doesn't, okay. Uh, that gecko there, I um, primed it and then riveted it. And as you can see, you can still see all the rivets, absolutely fine. Okay, I'll just use the Radu Brinzan photo etched rivet wheel, okay, which is brilliant. Highly, highly recommended.
get a bit foggy in here, isn't it? <laughs> so that's it for spraying. That's now done. Okay. Now, obviously I'm not gonna do the masks um, and spray the markings on, um, but the advantage of using this technique is, is you could then put, um, put your mask on, put your next layer of AK fluid or hairspray over the top, uh, spray your markings, take your masks off, and then you can chip mm -hmm. your markings as well, which is what I've done on, on the gecko. All right, and you can fade your markings and everything. So with decals, it'd be very difficult to do. So that's it for the base paintwork. All right, now we're going to move on to the more sort of armour techniques that I've brought into the aircraft. So the first one I'm going to do is a filter. And the thing I'm going to use for the filter is AK Interactive Winter Streaking Grime. And I use this a lot. This is what pretty much I use all the time. Because if you look at the bottle, it's a kind of a very grey-green shade. Okay, the Winter Streaking Grime. And that for aircraft modelling particularly, is very useful. Now I don't do a panel line wash. I tend not to do it, because you're fine with your filters and then all your oil effects over the top. You don't need to, okay? So that's had no panel line wash on it whatsoever, okay? So your filter, effectively what you're doing is you're gonna unify your paintwork, all right? And you wanna use a very thin um, mix of this stuff. So I've got some uh, just white spirit, happened to be AK Interactive. So we'll pour just a bit in there because I don't need too much. Just a little bit more. That'll do. Right, for this one, you're gonna need a wide, soft brush. So we'll just use this one again, get rid of all the, the water. Dry it off. Give this stuff a really good shake. It's enamel and the sediment tends to settle to the bottom. So give it a really good shake. Okay, and then you don't need too much paint. I'll just use what's left in the cap and mix it with your white spirit. And that's it. So you've got a very thin wash. Okay, so you can just see that it's very thin wash. And then all we do is chuck it on. Like that. So I'll just do the one side so you can see the difference. I'll we'll let that dry. Okay, one or two coats, and it's very, very subtle difference, okay? But it's just ever so slightly unified the paint, okay? When you've got markings on there, especially German markings, you know, which with your white crosses and things, mm -hmm. they can really stand out and jump at you, really bling. Doing that will really blend them in. I've just had a brainwave. I'm gonna show you something else. All right, I'll use the hairspray just for ease. See, and I've got the white there. We'll do some winter whitewash chipping. All right. Put the lid on that before that goes everywhere. Right, matte white, because again, we want it matte. Where's my alcohol? There it is. Right, you want this to be quite, quite a thin mix. All right, certainly no speckles in your paint when you're spraying, because that would be too thick. And I'm quite agricultural, I'll just make it up as I go along. I don't mix to ratios or whatever, just whatever works. So we'll just give that a bit of a test. 
underneath. It's not quite thick enough. And then we'll just spray it on. Make sure the hairspray is dry, it is. Now obviously this is going over quite a heavily chipped coat and really it wouldn't be that heavily chipped. But... See it's quite thin and you just build up the, the layer slowly. And again you can use this on obviously vehicles, eastern front, you know, T-34s and the German stuff. Again, I'm trying to, trying to be a bit random with it. A bit more in the nooks and crannies. There we go, so you get a nice mottled, bit of a random effect. Excuse me while I scratch my nose. All right. So that's good enough for a base coat. So I'll just clean out the old airbrush. That'll do us. And we'll just make sure it's a little bit more dry with the old hair dryer. Now, as I said before, uh, the thicker the whitewash, um, the smaller the paint chips, all right, and the less effective it's going to be, but you can use that to your advantage. So what we'll do, where's my big brush, here we go, in fact we won't use that one, we'll use this one, just because that's got a bit of, of the uh, filter on it. So exactly as before. Give it a soak. So if, certainly for aircraft, you want to concentrate on leading edges, um, walkways, hatches, that kind of thing. For military vehicles, where the crew's going to get in and out. Okay. And the trick is, is to be patient. Here it comes. So it's just yeah. starting to chip now. So in fact, what's happening here is that the water is dissolving the paint. Am I right? No, the water is dissolving the hairspray or your chipping fluid. Oh. And because the paint is dry on the top, mm -hmm it will fracture and crack the paint and that's why you get a nice chipped effect. <clears throat> so we'll just concentrate in the areas where there's a couple of hatches on the wing, the leading edges.
So that'll do for the wing. Just move on to the fuselage. So also what you can do if you've got cocktail stick or some tweezers is just scratch the paint, then go with the top so you can get some nice fine scratches that way as well. That's always a good technique. So there we go, I think you get the idea now. So you can see there you get a really nice chipped effect on your white on your winter whitewash. Okay. And that's exactly what I did on the on the big Heinkel. And if you look in the competition, the little Mesh Schmidt 110. Okay, really effective technique. Right, this is where the filter comes into its own really because we can unify the paint here as well, using the same mix. So we'll just chuck it on. If you put too much on, like I just have, just clean your brush off and then you can just give it a bit of a wipe. Like that. And what that will do is that will again unify and blend the paintwork. Like that. It'll also give you a nice grimy, yep, weathered feel. Okay. Yeah, I, I will use the winter streaking grime because it's got that grey green gungy look to it. It yeah. works for pretty much everything. So you can dull down your details also. Yeah, absolutely. So if you've got decals, obviously you want to put a varnish, seal them all in because otherwise the filter can collect around the edges of the decal film. So make sure it's all sealed in. Excuse me. Very effective, yeah. and I pinched that from Pears lot. All right. right, moving on then. I've got a selection of oil paints. These are the, these are the Mig, uh, well the Abtilen 502 Abtilen ones, which sort of connected with Mig Productions. The reason why I prefer these is they tend um, to have a little bit less oil in them, um, so they dry a bit quicker. They dry a bit more matte and for modelling, they're, they're pretty much perfect. Okay, so I've got a selection of colours here. I'll just have a play with those. Uh, what I tend to do is get a bit of card. And what we'll do is I'll put a blob on the card and what that'll do is any excess um, linseed oil will soak into it. And you just need tiny amounts. Uh, one colour that I find is really useful is shadow brown. It's a very dark um, black brown colour. It's very useful. Ooh. Splodge. Buff again is, an, is another useful colour for fading. Yellow to fade the green because again that will keep it nice warm shade. And I tend not to use pure white. I've used, uh, I think this is UN, what, faded UN white, okay. Uh, 
blue is a good one for fading green in areas of shadow. And again, it just helps to give you that chromatic richness. And also bright green as well, because obviously that's a quite a faded dull green. There we go. So I just put a splodge on the card like that. And if I left that for about 20 minutes, you'll see that you'll get a dark, oops, a dark stain around the blob of oil. And that's the oil being leached out. So, right. Because I've forgotten my tiny little brush, I'll just use the end of this. What we'll do is we'll just do some dots over the top. Okay, and we'll do just a general fade. I tend, uh, what's that down there? Uh, not to do the streaking one, okay, and streak the oil paint back. Because again, aeroplanes will spend 22 out of 24 hours sat on the ground, okay? So that streaking effect that you'll get from the airflow doesn't really happen, okay? Yes, for dirt and grime and oil leaks and things, yes, it will but general paint fading, it won't. All right, that's my little bugbear. So taking your fine brush, which I haven't got, what we'll do is just put some tiny dots of yellow. That's all you want, something like that. Okay, tiny, tiny dots. green on the end of my brush now, that's a pain. Never mind, we'll sort that out. And then taking a damp brush, not wet, just damp, we'll just work that into the surface in just a tapping motion. Stage one, all right, so we're just going to start to blend it in now. And you want to get progressively drier with your brush. Okay. And just work it in. I'll give that blast with a hairdryer. So I've just done where my other side of my fingers where I've done it and you can see it's faded it but the yellow's giving it that chromatic richness. So we can add to that effect and we'll use a little bit of white, uh, sorry the buff this time. But also a bit of that shadow brown stuff. See, I would be normally applying this with a small brush, but I forgot it, so I'll go and buy one later for tomorrow's demos. Now with the darker shade, there we go, the darker shade, I've just put it in the areas of shadow, okay, and along the panel lines. This is why you don't need to do a panel line wash, because this is gonna do it for you. And again, we'll just start to blend. Okay, so that's just the first stage, just to get it going. Okay, just like that. And then we're just gonna keep working it in. Using a tapping motion, and just keep the paint alive as it were, just keep it working. The beauty with this technique is, if you go too far, you can just take some white spirit and rub it off and start all over again. Likewise, if you haven't gone far enough, you can just do a second layer, which is what I'm gonna do now. A little bit more of the shadow color, just in the nooks and crannies. And we'll just blend that in. So 
See the brush is getting drier and drier, which is going to help with the blending. Yeah, decals are on. This is the last stage now. And you can even use your finger just to rub it in. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit more of the highlighting. We'll use a bit of the green this time. Just the odd dot of green. And a bit of the white. Okay, straight away that's a bit, ooh, hello. That's a bit too much of the white, so we'll just take a little bit off. And a bit too much of the green, so we'll just take a little bit off. Effectively what you're doing with this is, where I did the filter before, this is little localised filters if you like. Okay, and then just blend it in. So I'm fairly happy with that. I'm just going to do one more bit with the black, uh, with the shadow brown, just in the deepest area of shadow. Like that, and we'll just blend that in. There we go, I'm gonna hold that round. So what that's done is it's that faded the paint, but it's also created false highlights and false shadows, which again is gonna to add to the richness of the piece that you're looking at. So two different aims that you're trying to achieve with the one technique. And I use that extensively on, on the gecko here. Um, Areas such as um, just around the raised nacelle here in the wing roots, all those areas of false shadow have all been enhanced with that oil paint. And then on the top for your general fade, your whites, your yellows, your greens, okay, just to add to that chromatic richness and the fade. And all these effects just layer one on top of the other to give you an overall blended, blended effect. I also tend to use the shadow brown in um, control surface hinges mm -hmm. as well. Um, and again, I may elect just in the hinge just to get the streaking back because you do get dirt and grime coming out of the hinges because as the aircraft will just sit there on the ground, um, water will pull in the nooks and crannies, dirt gets in, and then as the aircraft is, um, is moving, that dirt and grime will get swept over the wing. So that's the only areas that I'll do the streaking. Okay. What colours would you use on, on this blue aircraft? Blue, I'd use um, the faded navy blue is a good one for that, but I'd mix it in with, um, with the buff as well for the general fade. If you're going to use yellow on that, it'll go green. So I wouldn't use yellow on the blue, but certainly the, this sort of blue um, and the buff, and you can even mix the colours as well to get a different, to get a faded blue or to intensify that fade. Okay, so I'll just show you a similar technique now, or pretty much the same technique, but on the, on the winter side of it. So we'll just use the, the shadow brown. This is not working. I will get a new brush for tomorrow. We'll just spread that in those areas I 
So just there, I've just highlighted there this, the full shadow in the wing route and around the, uh, the bulge on the wing. And just with our damp brush, we'll start to work that in. What I tend to do as well is as I'm going along is clean the brush off. And that way you're removing some of that paint. So that's kind of stage two, working it in. Still quite wet at this stage. Okay, but we'll just keep going. Use your finger as well, just to help with the blend. Sometimes it will dry out like it has done on the wing route. So you just make your brush a little bit damp. And round you go. And just work that paint into the uh, into the low lying areas. So we're nearly there now. You can just dry it off. There we go, really grimy, dirty, Oop. winter whitewash. Okay. So again, that's simulating the shadow, the false sort of increase in the contrast really, but also giving a grimy effect. So again, we can add to that just using this faded white. You can actually pick out some panels with the white and then pick up some areas of the white. A little bit more, I think. So this is going to help with the sort of mottling kind of effect or mapping as the armour guys tend to call it. Blend it in. Like that. So you can see the difference between the inside of the wing and the outside of the wing. Here you take that and show it round. So you can see how quick that technique is and how versatile these oil paints are. Now the thing with these oils is they take and they take a long time to dry. I tend to seal them in behind varnish um, because if you look at that model and just look at the light, you see the oil paint will catch the light. That will diminish the more it, the longer you leave it, the more it dries. Um, but you can 24 hours varnish over the top, and it'll be you can work on over the top. Okay. So the last thing I'll show you is working with pigments and how we can use pigments um, to help in the weathering of our aircraft. Now the Pairs mob have been using pigments for a lot longer than aircraft modelers. I've got various ones here. This is one from Jay Laverty. This is uh, olive drab pigment. Now you can use that to again fade your green, but what I used it on this aircraft is to actually simulate lichen. Um, that sort of algae type gungy stuff that's going to grow on the airframe. Cheers, dude. Thanks very much. These people are getting a crash course in colloquial English with you. Know? They are, aren't they? <laughs> uh, I've also got some of these, uh, these MIG pigments, um, dark mud, Russian earth, which can be a good one for exhausts as well, because it's a very dark, smoky, browny black and a bit of dry mud. 
So first of all, we'll just have a look at the, the olive drab. And the first thing we'll do is going to put this on dry. And we'll just simulate um, lichen growing on this wing. So it tends to be a bit messy. But we'll just apply it dry. There you go, and just dab it on. It's as quick as that, just on the uh, on the wing bulge there. Okay, just a bit of lichen. Right, quick as that. The other way, what you can do as well, is just damp damp the area with um, white spirit and just sprinkle it on, and the white spirit will just hold it, but it will rub off. Okay, so you can fix it with a bit of pigment fixer. Excuse me. So that's lichen, and that's, I did that extensively, like I say, on that model. Uh, then we can use just accumulated mud and dirt. So this one is the, uh, is the dark mud, and again, using it dry, just tap it on and just work it in to the wing root. If you put too much on, just blow it off. and work it in. And as quick as that, and you get a nice sort of muddy, grimy, dirty feel. It's more for, like I say, the abandoned aircraft, that. Okay, such as that. It's quite an easy effect. If you don't like it, you can just get a bit of white spirit. I'll use this, this one. A bit of white spirit, and you can just wipe it off. You don't have to seed it in, but again, I tend to use a bit of pigment fixer. All right, and that will fix it. But be prepared that that may well alter the shade. Okay. And if you don't like it, you can just, like I say, just clean it off just like that. While it's damp, actually, just dampen the area. And you can do that effect of, if it's just an accumulation of dirt and grime and ming is just tap tap your brush and just tap the pigment onto the surface. Oh, a bit too much. Okay, and it will just stick to the surface. Like that. I'll just dry that off with the hair dryer. And you can use that for just like a build up of soil, which you can get obviously in abandoned aeroplanes. And again, even though that's been effectively stock on or fixed with the white spirit, that's quite fragile. Okay, you touch it and you'll rub it off with your fingers, get fingerprints on and everything. So again, use the pigment fixer and that'll just fix it on. Okay, and then you can do a similar thing on the, uh, on the winter whitewash. But we'll just do it dry and this is to simulate pilot's muddy boots as he's getting in and out of the aircraft and then we'll just work that in. There you go, as quick as that and quite a nice effect where well, you've just got the muddy pilot boots as he climbs in and out. And again, you can use different, different shades, the dry mud as well. Um, that's quite a good one for dusty areas, um, hot and dusty. So any um, North Africa aircraft, again, using that same technique, but the lighter shade for dust. Okay. So very use, use, uh, useful stuff for aircraft modelers as well. Bing. That's it, I'm finished. What a, what a, what a crescendo. There we go. I hope you found that uh, yeah, useful.
Okay, thank you very much for your you very attention. Much there you go.